Ada. Um, share to group. Worst case scenario, we got the recording, right? Right. Hold on, I gotta climb. Your happiness, make sure we're going to the right group. All right, I'm gonna hit go live and then it's gonna kind of right. like, ready? Starts right away. Wait, it should say Lou. All right, I'm gonna, hi everybody, this is Mara Lee. Happy Thursday, super excited. You know, as I'm talking, I'm just making sure that I um, see myself live. Um, hold on a second. Okay, so, so excited to um, kick off this series of Facebook Lives. Um, and I'm calling this series, Be Your Own Valentine and Love all of you. So we have all sorts of great topics um, this month, but I am incredibly energized about this mission critical topic that we are going to talk about today. And that is kicking our imposter syndrome to the curb. I mean, can't you just feel the energy behind that? And really energized also about our guest today, who is going to actually lead us on this topic, and it is Kelly Commander. I'm going to introduce Kelly in just a second. Before I go there, I just do want to set the stage that we do want this to be engaging. While it's going to be a conversation here, we really want you to join in the conversation, so feel free to post comments, questions. We're going to do our best. We have Facebook Live actually up on our phone. So say hi to us if you're here. Um, and if you're watching the replay, let us know. So we're going to try and do our best to keep up comments and answer. But if we do miss that, we promise, right, Kel, we promise that we will circle back around and address any comments or questions. So we'd love to know what's resonating with you, where you're getting stuck around this topic, you know, what challenges you're having, what, what wins you've had, what's worked for you. We'd love to hear that too. All right. So let's talk a little bit about our guest today. So Kelly um, is the president and CEO of K2 Creative and PR, and they are a public relations. They are also a content marketing and um, branding firm. And Kelly is also the creator, and she was the project manager and really the brains behind the anthology book that came out last year called 21. And it was a collect, yep, so she's got it on here. I got a copy here. Um, it really was a collection of stories of 21 um, very inspiring women who were resilient through the global pandemic. So just women who were entrepreneurs, who were business leaders. And Kelly was also a contributing author to that. And her, her actual chapter was um, From Imposter Syndrome to Inspiration, right, Kelly? That was the name of it. Uh, and I can say that I was very honored and privileged to also, Kelly challenged me on my imposter syndrome and invited me to be a part of that book too. So I do deeply appreciate that. The other thing that Kelly loves to do is that she really loves to just have down to earth conversations, which is what we're gonna have today and really mentor people um, and entrepreneurs on their journey as they continue to grow and evolve as well. So welcome, Kelly. Oh, also, Kelly is also part of my high vibe tribe. You know, you guys know that I'm always talking about energy and what are the things that are going to help us be at peace and happiness. And one thing I've definitely learned along the way, and I know Kel has too, is that bring those high vibe people into your world. So Kelly is a colleague. She's a peer. She's become a dear friend. We collaborate we brainstorm, we challenge each other, and we laugh a lot. And so I am so glad to have you. And so all of the speakers that are going to be here with us this month are all part of my High Vibe Tribe. I wouldn't have them here if they weren't. So Kelly, I'm going to shut up for a second and welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Marilee. I'm so excited to be here. This is fantastic. This is a subject that is very close to my heart, something that I love to talk about and educate people on and help them through. Um, so yeah, so from imposter to inspiration, here we go. All right, woohoo. All right, Cal, so we're gonna, so we're gonna just dive into it. Guys, um, we're gonna try and keep this between 20 to 30 minutes. So we're gonna try to kind of commit it to each other that we're gonna kind of keep it succinct as much as we can. 
we'd love for you to stay alive through the whole thing. If for some reason you can't, this the library, the recording's gonna still be in the group too, just so you know. All right, Kelly, let's dive into this. Tell me, what is imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome is a term that was coined back in the 70s. And it was used to describe successful and high achieving women who truthfully didn't believe that they were worthy of those successes, or they might have said they were worried that somebody was going to find them out to be a fraud. And it really doesn't affect men. It is mostly women. And it is, it is a term that is a real thing. Like people hear imposter and they think that's fake. And they say, well, what's imposter syndrome? And that is basically what it is. It is feeling that anything you have, you're not deserving of, any success you have might've happened by dumb luck and that you truthfully aren't what you say you are and somebody's gonna find out that you're a fraud and they're gonna challenge you. That's really the basic definition. Yeah, so let's, um, you, well, first of all, let me ask you this, Cal. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, guys, like literally just raise your hand and post in the comments, like who hasn't felt that? I'm like, hello, I know I definitely have. And Kelly, I know you said that it mostly affects women and it sounds like that's really where it stemmed from. I would definitely say that I actually, well, just throughout there, I actually do know some men and I don't, I, you know, I don't think you're just limiting this to women that do struggle with it as well. I think it's part of the human experience too, right? Yeah, it's in our heads. And once it's there, it's really hard to get rid of it. Once you have that feeling, it's really difficult to say, okay, I'm cured. I don't have imposter syndrome anymore. I don't feel that I'm an imposter. It's, it's just not something you can just get over overnight. So what was your level of imposter syndrome, knowing that this is a topic that you've really leaned into and got knowledgeable on coming into today? Oh boy. Okay. On a scale from one to 10, with 10 being, Mary, I got to back out. <laughs> I was probably like at a six or a seven because it's, it's not just getting on camera and talking about this, it's the vulnerability of admitting that you have it. And that's, that's a big part of it. And, you know, we'll dig into that a little bit deeper, I believe in our conversation, but anytime that somebody wants you to be professional and talk about what you do, the first thing that I think of, and I'm sure a lot of the people who are watching this think of too, is why are they asking me? I don't know anything. I'm not a professional. I can't talk about this. People aren't going to believe me. And that's so far from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're going to, they know more than I do, right? Like that, that message too. I have that going on in my head a lot. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about how, what are some ways people really know? Like, I know we're talking high level. Like, have you ever felt about Like, give me some real concrete examples of like how, I mean, you just kind of did, I guess, but like, how do people really know that they're experiencing it? Well, you know, from the research that I've done and the reading that I've done, there are three really strong things that may have happened to somebody in their early experiences, whether it be childhood, elementary school age, middle school, whatever. There's three experiences a lot of people have that end up forming into imposter syndrome. So one is where you're called the smart one. One is the hard worker. And the other is the unsupported. So the smart one is the person, real brief, I'll just describe these. The smart one is the one who does fantastic in school, gifted program, straight A's, all these accolades. And then as soon as they make some kind of a blunder or mistake or a failure, that sets them off and they're like, okay, I was never as smart as what people thought I was. That's kind of me, you know? And then the hard worker is somebody who's always had to work so hard for success. And then when something does come easy to them, that it, it makes them fall apart. They're like, well, I didn't have to work very hard for that. How did this happen? I should have had to work harder to get this job, to get this promotion, to get this success. And then the unsupported is sort of obvious. It's just someone who was never supported by an adult figure in their life, whether it was parents, grandparents, siblings, teachers, um, being unsupported and then finding success later in life also leads to a lot of imposter syndrome. I mean, those are very brief, high level descriptions because we don't have the time to really dig in. But anybody who's watching, if you really think about it, you probably fit into one or multiple of those three, the hard worker, the, the, the smart one, the hard worker and the unsupported. Yeah. And what I heard you say in Cal, I think that this is like the this is like really the heart of it. So if you really want to disrupt imposter syndrome and kick it to the curb, what I heard you Kelly say is like, you really went to the root, like getting to the root of where this inner dialogue, like 
where the heck it is coming from. So as we said, like if you've ever doubted yourself, if you've ever questioned your abilities, those are those like physical, emotional, mental signs that it's probably going on. And you probably have some ways to cope with that. Or sometimes like maybe you just avoid, right? The uncomfortable opportunity, right? Of taking that step altogether. Like it's the good old fight, flight, or freeze whenever we're feeling uncomfortable. Kelly, you've got your, you call them your WTF, (laughs) which I love. Um, It's not what you guys think. Get your head out of the gutter. It's so me. WTF. Um, WTF for overcoming imposter syndrome. And I know I, since you and I met two years ago, I've definitely seen you on this journey and I've definitely come along with you on that journey. So let's just go into those. Cause I think that that's going to really um, just shine the light and give some more actually boots on the ground examples of what this looks like yeah. and how you can overcome it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is something that I coined and made up myself because it just made sense to me. And WTF is such a common term. You know, why the face? Where's the food? No, WTF is, and I'll go over each one, but it's wake up, it's terminate, and it's find courage and opportunities. Those are the W, the T, and the F. And the W is wake up. And I did a Facebook Live yesterday, I think it was, and I told people if they were coming onto this call or they're watching the replay to bring their wake up call, bring their aha moment with them. You know, mine was a physical wake up call in December of 2019, when I found out that I had type two diabetes and everything just made so much sense, the way that I felt physically, emotionally, and that all tied into my career and what I was doing for a position, for a job. It just, it all tied in together that I knew that was my wake up moment. That was my W that I had to change, not only how I was eating, not only the exercise that I was not getting, but I also had to change my career. And I had to realize that I I had that strength and I had that gumption inside me to go out on my own. And that didn't happen until the middle of 2022 or 2020, I'm sorry, six months later, but I took those first six months and I really worked on myself. So your wake up call is your aha moment. That is your W. Yeah. I saw your, I saw your live and I was really thinking about what my wake up moment was. And I, and I keep coming back to it. You know, I, I think we all have wake up moments at different points in our life as we evolve right through our, 30s and 20s, 30s, 40s, wherever, wherever we want to say, right? We don't need to say our age today. Um, But my most recent one was in 2019. And it's crazy because you and I were having the wake up call like around the same time and we didn't even know each other then. So it's no wonder that we're attracted to each other because we're on that journey. Um, I remember I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. I knew that like unhappiness had been brewing for a while. And the crazy thing is, is I had, you know, a great, you know, marriage, and I mean, not, not perfect, nobody's is, but like, I was pretty happy in my personal life, had great, you know, great family, great kids, great support from that perspective, um, and a successful career in training and development and consulting, but something was off. And I hired and worked with a coach. <laughs> and I, what I realized was it was my career. I wasn't doing really, I was in the right ballpark, but not in the right, you know, Right, am I saying that right? Yeah, right. Ballpark, not in the right, <laughs> right seats. Um, I and I, I, you or something like you. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> and one day it just hit me I'm like, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. Like, this is not it. And, but what was keeping me from that, that unhappiness was the imposter syndrome. Because I think I knew that all along, but I was afraid to take the leap because I thought, who am I to go in and pivot from training and development? to going to just working more with people one-on-one and really challenge, you know, beyond just teaching leadership classes in their classroom and getting to the root cause of what's helping people to be happy and what's really taking them off their game and helping them really transform. Like, I was like, who am I to be able to do that? Like, seriously, I'm still trying to, excuse me, get my shit together. But once I had that aha moment, that wake up moment, like you did, like, it was like, like, I couldn't go back. Right. And I think you were like, Yeah, the floodgates just opened where I was like, okay, if I'm going to make changes to my physical self, I need to make changes to my spiritual self, my mental self, and and my career, you know, the whole nine yards, it had to all come together at once. And, you know, over a six month period, which I think is really quick, that did happen. So it did, it did work to my benefit. I mean, most people, you know, look at a health diagnosis as a, oh my God, 
a WTF moment itself, but to turn it into something positive and to get healthy and to change my career path is just, it's a huge deal. And I'm, I'm just very thankful for it. I would, um, I would love to know if you're watching live or watching the replay, like what is, what has been your wake up moment? Or maybe you even haven't had that yet, right? Maybe you're on the precipice of it. Um, but we'd love, to, if you feel comfortable, this is always a safe space. Um, if you feel comfortable sharing, we would love to know in the comments below, or even again, just challenging yourself to think about that a little bit. Like what is, what is your wake up moment? Um, right. So Cal, I'm trying to pay attention to comments, but because That's I'm, right. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm seeing a whole lot. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing any. Do you see any on your end? I don't, but that's okay. You keep looking for comments and I'll go to T. How's that? Yeah, please do. Okay. <laughs> T is terminate, which is another word for stop. So it is stop negative talk about yourself. Stop getting involved in toxic relationships. It's just stop all the bad stuff. Because the first thing we do is here's an example for you. Anytime somebody gives me or my mother, I've noticed this too, a compliment. Oh my gosh, your shirt is really cute. Oh, this is so old. I've had this shirt for 10 years. It's old. Oh, your hair looks wonderful. Oh my gosh, it needs colored. I have gray or I have roots. And a lot of people do that. A lot of women do that. The minute somebody compliments you, instead of accepting it, saying thank you and giving a compliment back, you throw it back at the person with negative stuff about yourself. No, my shirt's old. Oh, it has a stain. No, my hair is awful. So that negative self-thinking about yourself, the negative self-talk, that has to stop. Terminate. That's my T. Terminate that. Terminate toxic relationships. If people are not on board with what you're doing, tell them you need to step aside. You know, that's probably the hardest thing to do. But there are people who are not going to be your cheerleader. There are people who are not going to support what you do, whether it's in your personal or your professional life. You know, that's okay. That's okay. They're just not meant to take this journey with you. And you just have to stop that. So that's, that is my T is the terminate. And that's, this is the hardest one I think to, to accomplish. Yeah. And you know, that not just from your coaching, because you and I have, have sat together and talked through coaching sessions. And this is a really hard thing is to stop the negativity. Yeah, it's definitely easier. I mean, it, it is. It's easier said than done. I think we, anybody who's watching this, I mean, we've all been on the journey for a while. We can read all of the books that we want. And by the way, I, I relabeled self-help books, self-empowerment books, because I do really believe that we're empowering ourselves when we do that. But we can read all those things. We can read all the memes, the inspirational memes and like them. But until you figure out how to actually terminate, as what Kelly just said, terminate that negative thinking truly once and for all. That well, And you know what? Not even for all, because at the end of the day, it's part of who we are. It's how can I take a different perspective? How can I actually embrace those thoughts when they do come in and get curious what they're about and what is it that I need to, I need to do to shift? So Kel, why don't you take us to, um, and I love, thank you for bringing in the coaching that you and I have done, because I think that that's, I think that's great how we kind of tag team on our superpowers because yeah. you've experienced this real time. You've done a lot to kick this to the curb. You are getting that message out there, but some of the work that I do kind of does help with that transformation. So talk about the F for us, please. The F is finding courage and opportunities. So it is finding the courage from within and it ties into the other two of waking up and terminating all the bad behavior. It is finding the courage from within to take those steps to get yourself out of imposter syndrome, to kick it to the curb. And it's to find opportunities that continually challenge you, make you feel uncomfortable. Maybe they're outside of the realm of the possibilities of what you think you can do, but how do you know unless you actually do it, unless you actually try? So the F is finding courage and opportunities. Yeah, so give me an example of how you did that. Oh boy, well, I came up with this idea for the 21 book because I've wanted to be an author my whole life. You know, I even joked in the chapter that I wrote that I have, you know, notebooks of poems and short stories in a landfill somewhere from when I was a teenager. And you know, I, that's what I wanted to do. And um, then the idea was presented to me. Well, if you create an anthology, you can do one chapter, write the intro, write the conclusion. Yes, yeah, it's a lot to organize and manage, but you're not actually taking the time to write an entire book because I had just started my business. Like it was just not feasible at that time. Um, so finding the courage to do that and then taking advantage of all the opportunities that I have with 20 other women you, for example, I mean, I've taken advantage of a ton of opportunities with you guys. 
to do things, to grow, to learn, to maybe go outside my comfort zone. It just all fit together and it just all makes sense. So now I'm working on the ideas for creating a second book that I'm going to write myself. And it's so exciting and it's scary to be the only one because it, it was safety in numbers with 21, right? I mean, you, you felt, I'm sure you felt the same way that I did that, hey, there's this whole group of people. We're all going to work together. Safety in numbers, you know, and, and yes, we did a great job and we you know, ended up Amazon bestseller in three different categories. It was shared. So doing this stuff on your own can be really scary. So once you, have, once you, once you have, so thanks for the example, because I think again, it gets back to once you have that wake up call, like once you realize you're tired, you're tired of giving in to the imposter syndrome, AKA our inner critic, like you're, it's so exhausting to be in that. And you know, like you get that fire, like you want to make the change. That's when I think the T that's when you get serious about the T and the F like that's when I'm going to you you reached out. I know the story, you know, one another one of our colleagues who's in the book was um, Renee Farrow, who's also a coach. And I remember you said to Renee that you wanted to do a book someday. And she was like, well, why not do it now? And had Renee not said that to you and kind of challenged that to you, you may not have gone down that path like you probably wouldn't have actually. No, I and the domino effect also was Kelly sent me an email then that December and she's like, hey, thinking about doing this book and I want you to be one of the authors. Like talk about imposter syndrome. Like I looked at it. I, I think I read your email like five times. I'm like, wait, she's asking me to be in a, I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Well, like, now what? wait, let me ask you, what level was your imposter syndrome at whenever you got the email and then the first conversation that you and I had? What level were you at with 10 being, no, I'm not going to be a part of this book? I'm like eight. <laughs> I was pretty high. I was pretty high. And then I was like, okay, this is cool. This is exciting. And then when I actually sat down to write the chapter, I, it, it came in again. I was like, what? Yeah. and then last year, my daughter, um, she, she, long story short here, she was actually, she said, oh, she, she uh, participates in this strong women, brave, strong girls, brave women. I know I'm saying that wrong group um, at college. And she was like, we are, we are going to, I, we get to pick who we want to talk about this week. And I'm going to talk about you. And I remember like, I was like, what? Like, I think that literally that was my response to her. And I was like, oh, okay, that's nice. And then a little bit later, I had to unpack that. So I'm like, why did I have such a bizarre response to that? Like, kind of like, hey, nice shirt, right? Like, and we can't receive. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was my imposter syndrome coming back in to say, you know, keep me small, to keep me safe. So the thing with all of this is it, it keeps coming back up. But once you've learned the tools and can kind of normalize that it is part of the human experience. So I, I don't want to go deep into this, guys, because, you know, you've seen some, some of the stuff on other lives, but truly understanding our, our internal operating system, the way our minds operate, our thoughts trigger our emotions, which trigger our actions. And so by the way, you're just wired all the way back to the survival fit of the fittest, our brains are really wired to look for danger, to look through threats, like, oh my gosh, like write a book, like that's out of our comfort zone. Like, why would we do that? You know, flashing lights, you know, alert, 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 danger, Will Robinson, dating myself on that one. Um, <laughs> but you're right. It's, it's a combination of, you know, doing a lot of things at one time, sometimes that makes you say, holy cow, what am I doing? Well, and that stuff impacts how we show up our energy, our motivation, and if we really play full out in life. And so when you can understand and normalize, because we can judge ourselves, we judge ourselves for having the negative thoughts, like we judge ourselves for judging ourselves. Right. And so some of the things that you and I've chatted about and the tools that I have that I use is like, I really help my clients understand how the internal operating system works, where that's, where that's working for them or against them and getting back to those deep rooted stories from where did your imposter syndrome start? You know, it's at some point in life, there's something that made you doubt yourself, not feel smart enough, not feel worthy. I like to call this our inner critic or AKA our gremlin. And this can get really deep rooted. And what happens then as we move throughout our journey, like when somebody asks you to be in a book or to take on a, posi a new position at work, or you have this idea that, yeah, I'm ditching that job. I'm like going to start, you know, something new. Um, you start making up stories because that message is still rooted. Like, yeah, I'm not good enough. Who am I to do that? Yeah. yeah it, stories it, and it, scenarios. And you exactly. think what's the worst thing that can happen 
And that's what you focus on is the worst thing that can happen. When I started my business, literally June of 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, I, the worst thing that can happen is I would get no clients. The worst thing that can happen is, you know, I would not have any business. I would have people look at me and say, this is a joke. You're not a marketer. You're not an author. You're not a writer. You're not a publicist. You're not this. You're not that. When in reality, I am all of those things which is really important too. Like, you know, I tell people, you got to have three realities in your life that you know are good, strong basis for you to lean on. Like, I know that I have had success as a business owner. I know I have had success as a published author. And in that, I made 20 other women published authors too. Like some, some of them already were, but some of them were not. And it was a dream for them. They were able to start slow, write a chapter, become a published author. And the third thing that I know about myself is that I'm always trying to help other people and I'm honest and I'm, I'm sincere. And, you know, you have to find those things that you know about yourself that maybe other people don't know, but you always have to have those in the back of your mind as the negativity, the gremlin is running around that hamster cage in your head. Trying to tell you, know, you lies. Right. Trying to tell you yeah. lies or trying to tell you that's, you know, that's not true. That's not how people see you. You have to believe in yourself. And that's part of finding the courage and the opportunities to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, that's a post I just put out there this morning. Stop giving up your power and happiness to others or other things, right? Or AKA our gremlin, our inner critic, because that stuff's not real. And so Kel, you've done, you did the inner work to be able to, you've got these great WTFs, but there's so much meat to them. And you've done that inner work. And until you can truly, and that's why the topic just kind of bring this full circle guys, because I know we're, we're running, you know, Pat soon here to the, our time is that you need to be deeply connected to you and know really just what Kelly said, like know truly who you are and what you want. And maybe you don't know what that quite is yet, but spending the time to literally roll up the sleeves and not get afraid to kind of go into our shadow side and understand our stories and understand where this stuff comes from, because that's when you see the truth and who the amazing person that you are. That's when that stuff, this shit comes up. I remember um, I was with working with one of my coaches and I was like, oh my gosh, like I've been in I was calling the self-help section forever. Like, why is this stuff still coming up? And she's like, because you're growing. Because every time you step out of your comfort zone, your ego, your shadow side, your inner critic, whatever you want to call it. Um, I like to call mine Aunt Edna from um, the, Chris, or the vacation movies. Um, tries to tell you that you're not good enough. Like, it's going to still come up. But the time that you spend there when you do the work and you have these tools, it's going to be shorter and shorter and shorter. And you're like, mm, yeah, no, thank you. Hey, appreciate that. I'll grab a beer with you later, Aunt Edna. But like, I'm going to be me right now, right? Like, and it's not even just, I love kicking to the curb, but it's also embracing that because it's part of who you, who, it's part of who you are, right? Sure it, it, is. it truly yeah. is. That's part of your story, but it doesn't mean that it has to define you. You get no. to define you, right? Right. And if I can say, and I, I want to make it clear that neither of us is saying it's easy. Neither of us are saying that, you know, by somebody watching this 30 minutes of us chit-chatting back and forth about this, yeah. they're going to be like, that's it. I'm cured. I don't have imposter syndrome anymore. That's not how that works. But it's knowing there are people out there that understand it, people out there who support it, people out there who can help you. That's, that's what it's about. It's about leaning on each other. I don't know about you, Mayor, but I would not have a business right now if I didn't have friends and colleagues who have supported me and helped me along the way, who have made referrals to me, who have given me advice, guidance. It's the same with imposter syndrome too. Find somebody that you can talk to and open up a conversation just like what we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah, it can be scary and it can be vulnerable, but again, that's, that's the power of it all. Yeah. Kelly, how many times do you and I text each other a week about like, we're like, oh my God, like, I don't know about this or hey, talk me off the ledge. Like, yes, I mean, I could probably go, I mean, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. And it feels good, but it feels good to have people in your corner. And the crazy thing is, Marilyn, you mentioned this earlier, we've known each other for about two years. So it doesn't have to be a friend that you've had forever. Like I have friends from elementary school. Yeah, I can lean on them, but in a different way. You have, you know, your personal friends, your family friends, however that looks, and then your business friends, your friends that you make while you're building your business, while you're finding success and overcoming imposter syndrome and getting rid of gremlins and all that other stuff. And every single friendship you have is really important and valuable. They just mean something different. And I'm very, very thankful that you are my friend. Ditto, Cal. 
Well, we probably, we are at, at yeah. 30 minutes now. And I, I mean, I know we could keep chit-chatting about all of this. Um, what would be one final like takeaway you would want to share? Honestly, I would love to have conversations with people. It's not even a takeaway. It's more of a, a next step. You know, I know that you understand all this and I know that your coaching is so vital to get getting through this, getting over this. You and I have had coaching sessions and I've taken the um, assessments and all that stuff with you. I think that if somebody, you know, feels more comfortable talking to you because you are a professional coach in these areas or somebody just wants to shoot the shit with me, reach out to one of us and let's just do another conversation or better yet, put it in the comments if you feel comfortable and we'll write back to you and keep a conversation going because what somebody else says in those comments and our response might help someone who's too fearful to type in those comments. Amen to that one, right? It's the, it's the whenever we're in, we're in a, a crowd of people, we're afraid to ask the question. Well, you know what? Probably everybody has that on their mind and they want, they, you know, they're just afraid to put it out there. Yeah. Um, you know, Kelly, like this is real time, like sparking <laughs> in my mind, but I'm thinking, what would it be like for us to host just an open Zoom, not live, like host a Zoom where people can come and just talk about their imposter syndrome? Like, oh, sure. I don't know. Like, so if you're watching this, like, let us know in the comments, like if that would be something you would be interested in doing, like that's something that Kelly and I could talk about and maybe collaborate on and cook up where we literally just post it, like maybe an hour Zoom, like you just come and as you are and just kind of yeah. a, play, a safe space to share and chat. Like just, yes. I don't know, Cal, yes. I'm just, I, that literally just. No, that's happen. fantastic. That's fantastic. Make it like a happy hour one evening, you Ooh. know, yes, your drink of choice, tea, coffee, wine, beer, whatever. And we just sit and, and just chat and just get honest. And like you said, have a safe space where whatever's talked about just stays there. Yeah. I think that one thing that you and I have, have really embraced and, and recognized, and you already just said this, the power of having a high vibe tribe community. And if you have those people in your world that may not be in your high vibe tribe anymore, here's the thing. My theater analogy, you don't have to kick them out of the theater, but you can certainly move them out of your front row. And they don't even have to know. Um, <laughs> you get to pick who's in your front row that's going to support you and being the amazing person that you are to stand in your power. Um, Cal, where can, so outside of that, as we wrap up, where can people um, find you and follow you as you continue on your journey? Uh, my website is k2creativellc.com and the two is a number, k2creativellc.com. All my information is on there, all my social media links. And then I also have a kellycommander.com, um, first and last name, no spaces. And I'm gonna be working on that a lot more with my imposter syndrome talks and um, my up and coming speaking career. So that'll be on kellycommander.com. And she might be starting a Facebook community, but that's just, we're not sure yet what she's thinking about that. So stay tuned. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Marilee, thank you so much. It feels so good to talk about this and just, it feels like therapy, like getting it off my chest and just talking about things and hopefully helping others. If one person finds some kind of value in what we talked about today, then, then we were successful. I totally agree. Thank you so much for your time and for your energy and for your vulnerability and your commitment to not just your journey, but also sharing that with others because um, it's so important. Thank you everybody for tuning in. So appreciate it. Uh, definitely like Cal said, please comment, please reach out, you know, in messenger, if you don't feel like commenting, you know, if you don't feel safe commenting, um, we are here to support you and have a wonderful rest of the week and Valentine's is soon and that will be stay tuned for our next live we'll have another live next week I believe it's gonna be next Thursday um so stay tuned for that I will be actually putting that invite out there and the topic is um finding um our creating and finding our happy within even when it's hard um and that's going to be um next week but happy Valentine's Day yes treat yep. yourself to I don't know something spectacular because you get to be your own Valentine. Thanks, right. Mayor. All right, let me see if I can figure out how to stop this now. Okay, it's still recording, but it says the Facebook live. Okay, let me stop the recording. One second. It says seven views. <laughs>